In a recent federal government report on food allergies, poor tests and misdiagnoses appear to be causing misleading results in the field. Are people truly allergic to certain foods or are they just food sensitive? Here today to discuss the topic is Dr. Karen Boyle. Hi there, Dr. Boyle. Great to see you again. Great to see you, Tanya. So, Dr. Boyle, first of all, why do you think there are so many misdiagnoses on food allergies, which, of course, are giving people misleading results? Well, it comes down to the test as number one, because there are a lot of discrepancies about what the t best test is to determine food allergy, and there are a lot of false positives, which I know that we'll discuss. The other reason is really defining what the allergy is. People at home are having symptoms, which may be a food intolerance, stomach cramps, diarrhea, thinking that it's an allergy to a food, and it's actually food intolerance. Mm -hmm. About 10% of Americans actually have food allergies, but this new study shows that almost half of the people who think they have a food allergy actually do not. But isn't that what the tests are supposed to do? I mean, you can be at home thinking, I may be allergic to milk, but then you go and have the test and that tells you definitively whether you are or whether you're not. Isn't that right? It's supposed to be that way, but the tests aren't that good. The gold standard test is a food challenge test where a physician in a controlled setting would give a small amount of food in a capsule to the patient that they thought might have a food allergy. That's very time consuming and a lot of people are very concerned about doing that because the severity of the response could be life threatening. Mm -hmm. So that's the gold standard. The other tests that we do, which are skin testing and blood testing, have a lot of false positives and can misdiagnose patients in up to 50% of cases. So even the tests are problematic. And, but what is to account for those false positives? Is it just there's nothing you can do that's as good as the test will get? Well, the problem is they're measuring a response um, from the body. So let's just talk about food allergy. A, a true allergy is that the body is looking at that food as foreign and mounting an immune response to it. The tests that they're doing with skin response and the blood test may see some amount of antibody that's forming in the body, but not necessarily a true allergy. So mm. allergy would imply you know, hives, uh, throat closing, difficulty breathing, those kinds of things. And the, the reactions that patients may get to the skin prick test or the blood test, they may be, um, they're highly sensitive saying, oh, all these people may have, have an allergic response, but in actuality, half of those people really only have a true allergy to that food. And so an allergy, let me make sure I, I've got the distinction, an allergy can be life-threatening, is that right? A food toler intolerance, though, is not? That's right, Tanya. A food allergy is if someone eats that food, they mount an immune response. Their body says, that food is foreign to me. I can't tolerate it. Antibody is formed, and they develop uh, hives. They can have their throat closed, facial swelling. Those are the life-threatening responses, where a food intolerance, one of the most common food intolerances would be lactose intolerance. So that person may not have the enzyme able to process the sugar in milk. So they might get mm -hmm. abdominal cramping, bloating. That's intolerance, not an allergy. All right. And what are some of the most p common foods that people have allergies to? The most common foods are milk, egg, fish, peanuts, and other tree nuts. Those are the most common things we see as allergy to food. Are adults or children more likely to have food allergies? Well, we know that children are slightly more likely to have allergy. About 8% of children may have an allergy, whereas less than 5% of adults have allergy. But this, this, uh, this publication that came out really demystifies a lot of the dogma that we mm -hmm. thought was true. For instance, you know, they used to say a child shouldn't eat a certain food, like eggs, during the first year of life. That actually may not be true. And the great thing about children is 85% of children can actually outgrow their allergies. That is great. And now, can you, on the other side of that, can you develop allergies later on in life? You can, Tanya, and we don't really understand why. You know, why do people outgrow allergies? Similarly, can an adult develop an allergy later in life? And the answer is yes, they can, but we really don't know why. So since this test is showing that there are so many false positives, do you then recommend the gold standard test? I know you said a lot of people worry about it because it does have some consequences, but it seems like that really is the only way to find out for sure. 
Right, well, the formal recommendations are going to be published in June, but probably what they're going to recommend is, number one, seeing a doctor. So mm -hmm. the message with this is don't do a food challenge at home because you may have a life-threatening response to it. So don't test at home. Go to a doctor. And one of the fundamental parts of diagnosing is also talking to the doctor about the kind of reaction and response that you have. Keeping a food diary is also very helpful. Mm -hmm. In a controlled setting, yes, doing the gold standard, doing a double-blind, food challenge, um, that is really the gold standard. With also the other tests can be done, but doctors should not rely on the skin prick test or the antibody blood test as a means for right. pure diagnosis. All right, Dr. And Boyle. And you should get retested. Get retested. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dr. Boyle, for all this important information and for more information on this report. Be sure to visit the health page at abcnews.com.